Welcome back to the third of our videos in this series about our statistical reporting. This one is going to be specifically related to our table one, the various lines, especially those new ones that we added in this past year, as well as some auto sum lines that we've also included in here. So you'll have a better understanding of how those work and really what you need to fill in in order to get there. So let's go ahead and get started into the program. In order to get to your tables, you'll want to go into the enter stats area from that black banner bar. From there, you will see the tables up here in the red bar. You can hit access table one immediately. That's the, the particular page you'll come up on. But when we want to change, you'll see that the drop down menu gives you the other two. We'll focus on the other two later. So let's just stick with the membership participation now. I'm using my own church. You'll see Pleasant Grove and Thomasville. So when you see the numbers, that's where they're coming from. Yours will show up just like mine do within the 2014 values from the prior year for any of the tables. You'll want to take special attention to that because we will look at warnings between the two years. But more about that later. You'll see that the first 10 lines basically talk about all of our membership area. So lines one through nine actually is basically a change. What, what happened to our members this year? How many members did we bring in through baptism and profession of faith? How many did we lose through death? How many transferred in? How many transferred out? Each of those lines is here. Below that in 9A through 9G is the racial and ethnic demographics on our, our membership. Make sure when you add up all those lines, it comes back to line nine. That's one of our warnings. Also, double check which line you put each person, group of people in. Because we have discovered that some people have converted from having a predominantly white Caucasian church to all of a sudden having a Native American church in a year. We know that it's just people who've missed the line, but just be careful, watch what lines you're actually entering these questions on. And then 9H and 9I relate to the gender of our membership, male or female. As we move on down from there, we'll get into our attendance items. This is all about worship participation for the most part in, lines, in line 10. We'll talk about attendance at weekly or the average weekly attendance at worship services. Then we also ask for the average monthly attendance. If you think about it and you want to look at weekly attendance, look at your attendance in all 52 weeks, add all that up, then divide it by 52. We'll give you an average weekly attendance. In the past, we've dropped off the highest and lowest, but we've said, no, let's just put them all in there together. If you have a, a Sunday that you're actually closed because of snow or a couple of years ago when we had an ice storm and so most of our churches lost power, especially in some geographic areas of our conference. There was no church that Sunday. We had church in our own special, our homes in our own special ways. But that day we wouldn't count in our different averages. So then you would say, oh, it's only 51 weeks instead of 52. Perfectly acceptable. As we go into the monthly attendance, however, my recommendation is that each church takes each month, adds up all of those weekly attendance for that month. You'll have a couple of five week months in there. Figure out what your 12 months are. Then do an average of the 12 months. It should be something close to four times what your weekly attendance is. May not be exact, but it should be close. What we're trying to do through this is capture those folks who attend maybe only twice a month instead of four times a month for every week. We discovered that in a lot of the different studies that have been going on throughout the church denominations, not just ours, but others, that we really are starting to see regular attendance as being more twice a month rather than four times a month or five times a month, depending upon the weeks. From here on out from 11 down to 30, we're talking about participation. Participation of different people in our church, whether it's members or constituent members that have come in to be part of our church or those who are thinking about joining our church, visitors, etc. So let's start with line 11. Line 11 starts with our baptized persons. One thing that we changed this year or this past year was 11.b1 and 11.b2. These basically separated our baptized adults from ages 13 to 17 from those who were ages 18 and over, trying to basically capture those that were in conf confirmation classes for the year. The next one down is 13.A. This was a new line that was added to try, starting with 13 to get an average monthly number of active participants. This is that one line item that we're talking about that might change for this coming year. Active participants really look at who is really being a part of your church that may not be there every Sunday. So it could be people who are worshiping with you every Sunday or twice a month. 
because that's the, really the, the baseline, twice a month activity. It could be people in small groups. Now this could be the neighbor down the street that got invited by their friend. But as long as they're there twice a month, they would be an active participant. It could be people that came to different events in your church. If you had a dinner for a fundraising aspect, if you had a special missional opportunity, those are included in this as well. Anything and everything. It could also be someone who may be a shut-in, but still wants to contribute to their church and be a part of their church. So therefore they send in their monthly tithes still, as they're still shut-in. That person is an active participant. There's been lots of questions as to how to gather this information because you can see that it overlaps. And then in the following lines, we ask for age groups. That might be even more difficult. So we're still considering this line, so you might see some changes in this line going forward. But for now, do your best that you can. We know that there will probably be some estimates just like last year if you don't have a, a robust tracking system for these folks. But do the best you can in trying to come up with an estimate of what those numbers would look like. From there we move forward, you'll see Christian formation groups and small group studies. Moving on down, you'll see weekly attendance and Sunday school. These are lines that we've seen in the past and haven't been giving people lots of trouble. We move on down into membership in United Methodist Men and United Methodist Women, United Methodist VIM teams, volunteers in mission. And then last but not least, in lines 28 through the end, we're talking about monthly missional opportunities and those persons who have been engaged in that mission. You'll see that we started off with line 29 with community ministries for daycare specifically. And then in 30, anything other ministries related to outreach, justice, and mercy. These are some of the lines then below that that we added in last year to try to determine what types of missional opportunities are we providing through outreach, justice, and education. So we have those for schools, those for hunger, those for poverty, those for housing or the homeless, clothing closets, or holiday events, a Thanksgiving meal, a breakfast with Santa, trunk or treat at Halloween, and then any other types that we have. This is one of the auto sum lines that we've talked about. So you'll want to fill in the information in 30A through 30G that will then auto sum to line 30. Several people were trying to actually just fill in line 30 and not show all of the details last year, but you'll need to fill in the details in order to have the total. In saying that, I want to talk about a couple of the other auto sum lines that we have included in here as well. Line nine at the top, our membership numbers, will be the summation of all the lines from one through eight. It knows which ones to add and which ones to subtract. Don't worry. Line 19 is also the same way. It will take lines 15 through 18 to get to line 19 so that you have each of your adult and children's line items that will then to sum to your total. However, there are some auto sum lines that work the other way. The lines that they add are below the total. Line 30, we just talked about. Line 13 is this way, so that you see your ages for active participants are below the total on line 13A. Line 11B is also this way. For those age group breakdowns, then the total is at the top. That kind of covers everything on table one that we have to show today, especially those new lines that we added in last year. However, if there's some line that I didn't cover that you still have questions about, feel free to either call or email me here at the conference office and we'll be glad to give you some more information about those specific lines. Thanks for listening. A few more to go. Join us next for Table 2.